Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Google Spaces. This is one video that will be part of a series of videos on Google Workspace and how we're using them at Bethel Atlanta. So today we'll look at Google Spaces, uh, what we're using it for, why we're using it, and the uh, overview of it and basic functionality of it. So Spaces is like a uh, chat room with the added functionality of storing files and uh, assigning tasks to anyone in that space. We're using it to collaborate on projects, events, uh, administration of different departments and ministries, and just keeping track of what we're doing, um, who's assigned to it, and uh, discussions on all those, all the above, all the things that I just talked about. It's very beneficial because it acts as a uh, kind of like a, a memory in a way. You can, um, you know, uh, assign things that you talked about in a meeting, add files, uh, reference those files later. And then if you forget what you talked about, you can go back to your chat or file or whatever you have stored and reference it. And uh, it helps to keep you on track and prevents you from you know, doing work that you've already done over again. Uh, the other added benefit is everyone in the space sees progress and sees what you're doing, what you're working on, and sees the comments that you're making. So uh, it's just a great tool for collaboration. Okay, so actually getting to it, you're going to want to open a web browser and go to google.com. And then make sure you're signed into your account. Open up Gmail. And spaces should appear uh, typically on the left side of your screen here. If you go into your settings, there's that gear icon and click see all settings. And then go to chat and meet. If you don't see it for some reason, make sure Google chat is selected. And then you can adjust whether it appears on the left side of your screen or the right side. You can also adjust whether Google Meet down here will appear. So if I hit hide, this will disappear. Uh, any, if, you, if you have a Google Meet scheduled for that particular day, it will show up there. So it can be handy, but if you don't use Google Meet or don't have a need for it a whole lot, um, hiding it can save up some space. So I'll leave it as is for now. Okay, hey, so uh, Spaces lives in Gmail. This is true of the Gmail app on your phones as well. You can download the Gmail app on your iPhone or Android, or you could download the Google Chat application. The difference is Google Chat only has chat and spaces on your phone. The Gmail app will have all four of these here. So you'll be able to see your mail, your chat, your spaces, and uh, any upcoming Google meets on your on the gmail app so personally i use the gmail app um just to save space as far as apps on my phones and it's just nice that it's all incorporated into one app okay so spaces uh any space you've been added to should appear in this section here if it does not if someone's told you they've added you to a space and it's not appearing here hit this plus symbol go to browse spaces and it should appear here as you can see uh, this test account here for ron swanson he's been added to awesome collaboration space it's not appearing in the spaces section so i hit plus browse spaces and it is appearing here hit this plus symbol to add it to my spaces and i have now joined i can close that out this chat icon appeared because it's asking me what i want my notification settings to be for awesome collaboration space Notify always means I'm always going to be notified when someone posts. Uh, only at mentions means when someone tags me in a post, I'll be notified. Otherwise, I will not. Don't notify. I will not receive any notifications. I'll leave it at notify always. And then I can close this. This is just a chat. If, if I were to send someone a direct message through chat here, it would pop up on their screen like this. But that's not the best way to view chat spaces. Best way to view chat spaces is to go to the space, select it, and then you can see the chat a little bit bigger here. 
Okay, so in this particular space, I have what's called threaded replies, meaning conversations are separated into threads. Each of these is a thread. This is good to use because it keeps you organized. Anytime a task is added, it will create a thread for that task. Anytime a document is added, it will create a thread for that document. And then you can also just create a chat thread if you have a question about something and you can keep it uh, the discussion on that particular question um, to that thread. Okay, uh, let's look at adding, creating a space because I referenced threaded replies. Uh, let me show you here really quick what non-threaded replies looks like. So this space here has non-threaded replies, meaning it's just a long chat conversation without those threads. So I definitely recommend threaded replies, easier to keep your chat space uh, organized. If I hit this plus button next to spaces, I have this menu here, starting a group conversation is just a chat with multiple people. That's all that is. So that's not the same thing as a space. A space has the added functionality of files and tasks, and we'll look at that in a minute, but let's look at the create space menu. Uh, you need to give it a name. Uh, you have the option of adding an emoji. The awesome collaboration space has an emoji, so you can see what that looks like. And you can add a description if you'd like. In this section, you would want to enter the people in this space, you, the person creating it, will always be a part of that, and you are automatically the space manager. Uh, you can create a space and not add anyone. It just means it's just going to be a space for you, and you can add people later. These three settings here, you cannot change after you create the space, so these are important to get right. Restricted means only people you add can join. Alternatively, if I select Bethel Atlanta, Anyone with an at BethelAtlanta.com email address would be able to find this space and join it. Use threaded replies. That's what I was talking about with the, uh, the, the chat window. Uh, I recommend always checking that checkbox. Once again, you cannot change that later. So it's important when you're first setting it up. And then allow people outside your organization. This means people that do not have an at BethelAtlanta.com email address can join. If this is unchecked, only people with an at BethelAtlanta.com email address can join. If it is checked, people without an at BethelAtlanta.com email address can join. I recommend just checking both of these because um, this keeps you more organized and then it doesn't hurt to have this checked even if you never use it. Uh, it just allows for the possibility of adding someone outside of the organization later. So check those. And that's it. I'm not going to create a space because I already have a couple made. Okay, so awesome collaboration space. We've looked at chat. This plus icon allows you to add documents. You can also add uh, emojis, GIFs, upload files, add Google Meet uh, video conference links, and you can format your text using that little A with the underline there. Another thing you can do is react to posts. So very similar to, you know, uh, text messaging in that way. Uh, and then you can also forward a uh, chat to your email. That's what that icon is. If I select that, it will forward this uh, specific, you know, comment or task or whatever to my inbox. And then I have the option to delete it as well if I need to. Okay, so let's look at files. So files, um, as you can see from the chat here, uh, this file was added. And so it appears in the files section here. So this file section is just going to store any of the files that you are working on for this particular space, whatever your purpose of this space is. By the way, that external there, uh, that's letting you know that people outside the organization can join. So. Once again, that's that checkbox that I talked about um, when you first create the space. If you have, if you check that, you're going to see it say external, and all that means is people outside BethelAtlanta.com can join. Okay, so adding files. One thing that's important to note is you can only add files that have already been created. You cannot create a new file from spaces. So 
if I hit add file, I'm only gonna have options to add documents that have already been created. I don't have any options to create a new document. So I hit add, I selected that awesome collaboration document and it took me back to chat. The reason for that is anytime, once again, I add a task or a document, it's going to create a thread in the chat for that. Now, what I have to do in order for the file to be added is I have to hit send message. I have to actually add it in chat to do that. Hit send message, and then I'm given options uh, for sharing. So this is asking me what I want the people in this space to be able to do with this document. Do I want them to be able to view it only? Do I want them to be able to comment on it? Or do I want them to be able to edit the document? I'll change it to edit since chances are if you're working in a space like this many times, you're going to be editing a document together. Send. And there we go. Changing drive permissions. So it's, it's uh, just updating that document to be <coughs> editable by myself and uh, Ron Swanson. Okay, so that's adding files. Asks. From the tasks tab, you can assign tasks to anyone in that space. Uh, let me go ahead and delete this one here. Uh, so I've already added three of them and you can assign people. You can only assign someone in the task and then you can attach a date and a time to it. If you do attach a date and a time, it will appear on that person's calendar. If you do not attach a date and a time, it will not. It will only appear in tasks. If you assign it to someone, it will appear in their personal tasks, which is this little icon right here. If I open that up, I can see personal tasks for Ron Swanson. Uh, but as you can see, um, only two out of the three are appearing because this one's assigned to Eddie. These two are assigned to Ron. And if I add a task here in my personal tasks, once my keyboard starts working, there we go it will not appear in the space because these two are separate. These are personal tasks, these are space tasks. So important, important to keep that in mind. Keep that. <clears throat> and that is it. Uh, last thing, leaving a space. Don't be afraid to leave a space. If you create a space for a specific event and the event ends and you no longer need that space, you can select these three dots leave it, leave the space that tells you right here, you won't get updates or uh, send, you won't be able to send messages unless you rejoin. What's important to know is you can always rejoin a space you were previously added to. So by leaving it, you're not losing anything. You just won't be notified. Um, it won't be taking up space in your spaces section here. But if I hit plus, I go back to browse spaces, the space is still there. So uh, don't be afraid to leave a space. You're not gonna lose anything, it's okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. So, uh, there's the overview of Google spaces, go forth and be productive. Thank you.